Hello, hello everybody, it's 6.45 p.m. Central Time on the 5th of December, 2022. It's Monday night here in the United States. I hope you're doing well. We are here on the Earthquake 3D live stream, broadcasting live over on Twitch 24 hours a day or whenever I have an internet connection. And we're recording now. We're going to put this over on YouTube. I have an update to get everybody up to speed as to what's going on. Have a significant increase in earthquake activity in the past day. We'll start over here in the West Pacific. Work our way over to the West Coast of the United States. So yesterday, a 6.9 earthquake last night. 6.9. Downgraded to 6.7. Struck right next to Tonga. And that's just where we're starting out. You see the big rings here on the screen. Now, coming over, and I can actually open up a USGS plate boundary map to show you where that struck over here at the pinnacle tip of the plate. Now, going out in all directions, west, south, and east, well, not all directions, let's just say west, south, and east, the same sized earthquakes spread out in all directions. So over to the west, we have 5.5 to 5.7. Over to the east, we have a 5.5 to 5.3. They downgraded it, whatever, and a separate 4.9. Up to the north, we have a 5.2 to 5.3. Over to the west, we have a 5.2 to 5.3. And then, of course, looking in between the areas, we have stepping stone paths of the same sized earthquakes down to a hair of a point of one another. 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6. Going all the way across. The, all where the arrows are. And let me zoom in and show you where we have our arrows. These are spots where we watch for the flow to go across. Now let's go over to the USGS map and show you. They don't have any arrows on their map showing you where to watch. Now I just showed it to you. A spread of earthquakes going all the way across here. And you'll notice USGS map has next to nothing on there. We're looking at 48 hours worth of earthquakes here, or just a little bit less. And it turns out the USGS isn't reporting all the earthquakes to their people in the first place. So if you check the USGS site, you're not going to get the full picture of what's going on. You have to use multiple agencies to even see. And we're talking a pretty noticeable difference in the last 48 hours between what you see here and 24 hours on the USGS page that you see here. So this enables us to see it, the spread that goes across an area in two days' time, not one. We have clusters around where our big earthquake activity is, and we have earthquakes that are raised high off the globe. The earthquakes that are raised high off the globe are deep earthquakes down below the plates. And you'll notice where the deep earthquakes are raised up, or you may not notice. We have letter Ds to stand for deep earthquake location. So these are forecast points where we watch for new deep earthquakes to pop off. And every location going across the entire equatorial region from South America all the way over to Indonesia has a series of deep earthquakes down below them. Now this 5.0 is right below Java, Indonesia. And that takes me into the volcanic ash advisories that we need to talk about for today and yesterday. Over in Indonesia, a very large blast occurred. Let me take you over to my community page. And just scroll down here. So a few different things happened. Over in Indonesia, this took place. Check it out. Look at this. Go over to disaster compilations and make sure to subscribe. But pyroclastic flows coming down and go right to the camera. Watch this. I'll just speed it up a little. Okay, I mean, pretty big deal, guys. This went up 30,000 to 50,000. There's some debate on how high the blast went, but it was a pretty big deal over there. Then, to top it off, we had another blast that was huge. This one is in Italy on the plate boundary. Look at Mount Stromboli here. Pretty impressive, right? I mean, it's not like we get these all the time from Stromboli or from Samaru. So that being said, going down the list now, we have to pay attention to who's erupting and how high the eruptions are going. I don't forecast eruptions, but it is worthy to pay attention to where they're happening. They do play into seismic activity. Okay, so the biggest that I'm seeing on the list now is 12 to 15,000. 
That's way less than where we were going up to 50,000. Okay, I don't see any new additions to the list. Mount Ibu's a regular eruptor, Mount Tukono, Mount Sabankaya, Popocate Patal. They are getting bigger in blast size, though, and people are reporting that to me. It's not just my take on it. People are like, did you see the eruption at Fuego yesterday? Did you see it at Popo yesterday? I didn't see them, but I hear you guys talking about them. So let's recap. New deep earthquakes. New shallower, larger earthquakes next to where the deep earthquakes are taking place. New volcanic blasts going 30 to 50,000. One here. And all the way across over where our next round of deep earthquakes is are, and that's right here in the Tyrrhenian Sea. Let me take you back to the USGS plate boundary map and show you what's in the Tyrrhenian Sea next to Italy. Right here is the plate boundary. And guess where Stromboli is? It is right here, right in the boot tip. Out here in the, uh, you don't see it there actually. Hold on, let me take you over on Google Earth and show you on Google Earth. Uh, let's see, we got our volcano place marks, I think. There it is, here's Mount Stromboli. So big blast at Stromboli and look where our deep earthquake is. Deep earthquake raised high off the globe right below Stromboli. So pretty much all of our spots where we have the deep earthquakes, we've got big seismic and big blasts. And that takes us all the way out to the West Pacific over into Asia, where then we take a step down once we get into the plate, but the step down is within the magnitude. We go from 5.2 down to 4s. Let's show you where that happened. Over here, going into the plate, we go from 5s down to 4s. That's not that big of a drop, seismically speaking. So we go 5.2 down to 4.3. What else happened? Ah, yes, going across the Pacific the other direction and going down to the south, down towards New Zealand. Over the past few days, New Zealand got hit by two different fives, one shallow, one deep. The deep one was the last one we were left off at, and nothing big has hit since. However, this earthquake down at 168, that's right next to the magma chamber for Topo Super Volcano. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's not going to erupt or anything. It's just seismic is next to it as the flow is coming down along the plate boundary. The flow going from our deep quakes down to the south. Again, same size quakes. 5.1, 5.2, 5.1, 5.2, 5.1, 5.2. I've already said it like three or four times going out in all directions. So what happened over to the east? Well, take a look at it. A 4.9 to 5.3. Again, that could be slightly bigger, but we'll go with what they, do, they went with. 4.9 to 5.3, just like all the others. So the same amount of energy is spread out across all distances once we get over here to South America. Deep earthquake down below Argentina, up above it, a 5.1 to 5.2. There it is. Hold on, let's get it on the screen here. There it is. 5.1 to 5.2. What else hit? Another 5.1 to 5.2. Struck out here at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and another 4.9 to 5.1. Struck down here at our letter X. Now meanwhile, over here at Gabon, take a look at it, Gabon, Africa was struck by a 5.5 and that caused deformation and actual damage in videos that made out over to the international community which I've got right here on my page here Gabon Africa and cracks in walls cracks in floors Let's see, a large crack. It does not just go on for a little bit. They're actually pretty big cracks in the ground and pavement. So it's a fair amount of deformation, but now that being said, look at the 5.5. I'm gonna take you back two days, look. Or three, I'm sorry, three. Same sized earthquake, 5.5 originally downgraded to 5.4, struck at our letter X. And we can trace the fracture zones. You see, they go east and west. We connect from the fracture zones here over to the east. We can literally go from right here at Ascension Island, up and over into the quake. So deformation is really caused by a push coming across, and the distance apart is the size of the wave. Very low frequency or ultra low frequency or extremely low frequency peaks between the wave. Now, same time that's going on, so within the same time frame, back on December 2nd, three days ago, 5.7 struck down here at the letter X, and another series of 4.9s struck. How many 4.9s is that, right? 
Now look, look, one more time. I'm going to take you over to the USGS plate boundary map and show you. For new viewers, I again, uh, well, you know, you've never seen this before, but coming across and going down to the south and going up to the north and going all the way down to the south Sandwich Islands. See the stair step fracture zone, and it goes down here, and we go up and around and over this way. Now, USGS doesn't have anything on their maps, but I do. Let me show you. Going up and around this way, we jump out over to Ascension Island. And going down and around this way. And these arrows have been on here for nine years, eight years now. We don't move the arrows. This is the way the flow goes almost every week. So down to the south, same size. Now go back, look, boom, boom, boom. Going around to the south. And boom, 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 going around over to the north. All the same size. Now the middle moved in between the two. So I would say, what's the difference between a 5.5 .5 and a 5.7? Obviously 0 0.2, right? Now guess what? If you take this 5.5 plus this 5.4, it equals 5.64 or so, or 5.69. It equals 5.7 up to the north. That's the way we add our magnitudes together. You do Every 5 you add on, it takes it up by another point. So anyway, it's the same size movement. Now, to seal the deal that we're dealing with the same size movement all the way across the planet, whether we're south or on the north, look. Another 5.4 to 5.5, and a 5.2, if you add them together, it equals 5.5, 5.6. Struck here at the Reiki Janes Ridge. Reiki Janes, Janes, can't say it. Good luck trying to say it. Now back over to the west by northwest, we still have to go up into Japan, because guess what? Guam, north of Guam on the Izu Ridge, got hit by a 5.2 and a 4.9. Let me get a sip of my coffee while you think about digest all these 5.2s and 4.9s everywhere. It's the exact same size energy. What, even if you go with the crazy downgrades like they're doing, it's the same size energy going across the whole planet. Dropping off the same sized earthquakes all the way along the way as it's spreading out away. Well, that should stand a reason that the next spot to be hit up to the north will be 4.9 to 5.2. Going up into Alaska and beyond back over to the United States. Now, finally, before we get into the United States and so forth, let's talk about Central America. Central America got hit by multiple mid-range fours. If you add them together, it equals 4.9 to 5. Let's do that. 4.5 plus 4.1 equals 4.61. Plus another 4.1 equals 4.72. Plus another 4 equals 4.82. And then another 4.3 down to the south equals 4.95. And then you add in the 3. I mean, you, it doesn't really do much. So, in other words, we've got a 5's worth of energy spread across the whole plate boundary across Central America. From Mexico, Central Mexico, all the way down towards Panama. So, in the middle now, we're going to see a break. Something 5.2-ish. 5.2 should break in the middle here. How do I come to the 5.2 determination? <laughs> How am I coming to that 5.2 determination again? Oh, that's right. It's around the whole freaking planet. Now, let's go up to Alaska. Guess what else hit? 4.9. Whop, 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 whop. 4.9 again, guys. Come on. How many times is it? Another 4.9. The only thing missing is a 5.2. Let's go into the United States. Go take a look and see what's going on down here. Got all kinds of people contacting me about an earthquake that struck in Central Valley of California, South Sacramento Valley. And really, there's multiple earthquakes which have struck in the past hours. So multiple fours have struck all the way across California. Several of the earthquakes have been magically downgraded. Now, you know, let me tell you a quick story about the downgrading of these earthquakes. So first of all, let me show you what's at the earthquake epicenter. And I will tell you the story about the downgrade as you see what's there. But first things first, picture speaks a thousand words, shall we? Let's go along with me on a voyage of discovery. Californians, West Coast people, look. Pay attention now, please. We have roads here in case you know your cross streets, but we don't need to see the cross streets. What you need to see is this place called Kettleman City. Now, the earthquake is right here where the yellow place mark is. Now, down here and up here are thousands of oil wells. Let me show you. I'm just going to randomly zoom in on some of these, and you guys can do the rest of the sleuthing if you need to. But just take a look at the screen. You should be able to see it here. 
you know, one shadow of a jack of a pump. Then we go on and on and on for miles. So this place is called Missouri Triangle, of all things. I'm from Missouri. Uh, Missouri, I guess. You don't call it out there. Anyway, you can follow the pumping operations through the farm fields. And they connect up to the other mountain range up here to the north. They just keep going. Again, they go through the mountain range. I've got a place mark here where the earthquake is. And then our oil pumping operation here at this mountain range. And it's a matter of miles. Now, I always look 6 to 10 miles. And this is old imagery. A year and a half almost old. There's most likely more out in here since the last flyover. I mean, I'm already zooming in on a few already. So... Definitely, I need to put more place marks in here. This is all drilled. Okay, all of this. And down to the south. Now, this is the San Andreas right here. This is San Andreas and all your drill points right next to it. Now, the drill points go up to the north, and San Andreas, of course, goes up to the north. And right here at Colinga is where all your drill points really start. And they number in the tens of thousands at this point, starting up north and going down to the south. So, drill points start here at Colinga, <clears throat> well, hold on. <laughs> Had to clear my throat. I don't want you to have to hear that. Okay. Anyway, starting here at Colinga, going down to the east by southeast, all of this is drilled from up here to down here and down following the San Andreas. And when I say all of it drilled, I'm not joking. I can just randomly zoom in on any spot down here and you will find tens of thousands of oil wells that go right up to the San Andreas. And San Andreas is the big diagonal line here that goes along the western side of California. So let's go look at the earthquakes now. What are you going to see? You see a series of earthquakes starting near 4.0 right on the San Andreas. That struck at 2313 UTC. Then move forward one hour to just 15, 0015 on the 6th. Again, one hour later, and another four strikes down here along at the drill points. First on the San Andreas, then at the drill points. Both get downgraded to less than four. So it is what it is with the recalculating of the magnitude. But I do want to go check the USGS and just go see how they're coming to their determination, if they even tell us, on this 3.9 earthquake, or, well, 4. But let's go look. Magnitudes. Local magnitude list. And we're going to throw out the high end. We're going to throw out the low end. That'll give us a good broad swath in the middle of what it really is. So going down the list, look at all the 4s, right? But we'll throw out the 3.8s and 3.9s. We're also going to throw out the 4.7s and 4.9s, right? It's going all the way up to, I mean, we're getting readings, local magnitude readings going up to 4.7. So we'll throw out the high end. We throw out the low end. And where does that leave us? That leaves us with 4.1 to 4.2. As most likely the earthquake, what it most likely was, if you take the averages of the stations. Again, we'll throw out the 3.8s and 3.9s. We throw out the 4.6s and 4.7s, and that leaves us with something more like a 4, and that's what it is. Same with up to the north. I'd like to go check, just to go quickly see how it looks here. Local magnitude list, going down the list. We'll throw out the high end. We throw out the low end. Okay, so on the high end, I'm seeing 4.3 to 4.5. Is that right? 4.3, 4.2. Uh, anything bigger? Mid-range fours at all on the list? Okay, and we throw out the low end, 3.5 to 3.6. What does that leave us with? A 3.9 to 4. That's what it leaves us with if we go with the averages, if we throw out the 4.1s and 4.2s. And then we throw out the 3.5s and 3.6s. And what does that leave us with, guys? All right, okay. Again, I don't want to dog them too hard, but when I see multiple fours strike down, on the San Andreas and drill points within an hour of each other, and one gets downgraded down to 3.6, the other gets downgraded to 3.9, and we've got a lot of other stuff going on where there's downgrading going on to 4.9. So let's talk about the other earthquakes that struck across the entire United States. This is one that should get everyone's attention. 
Moberly, Missouri. Somebody get a hold of L.A. Marzulli or Steve Quayle. I'm not joking. Earthquakes. Now, I'll meet you up there if you guys want to go up there. We can go investigate. We should go buy some property and start digging. <laughs> up here next to Moberly. You know, if you don't know the story on Moberly, back in the 1800s, the New York Times and several newspapers ran articles saying that they found down at the bottom of a 360-foot deep mine shaft, coal mine that they have here, that they found an entrance to an ancient city built by giants. And they ran that in newspapers for a good several weeks. And they tried, skeptics, tried to say that it was an April Fool's joke because the story ran at, in, in April, apparently. In April of that year, the story ran. It didn't run on April 1st. It, you know, they tried to say it was a hoax. Yeah, a hoax. Sure, okay, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know about the Giants, and I don't know about the city. But guess what is here? They didn't lie about there being a coal mine there. There is a gold coal mine there. They list it in the actual story. Wait, it's the Enry coal mine, right? E-N-R-Y? E-R-N-Y? Ernie, Enry? Anyway, here we go. We get earthquakes now striking. And where are they striking? They're striking next to where the old coal mine, one of the old coal mine exploratory shafts used to be. They do have a few other spots here that are now being mined, but that's open uh, quarry mining, so to speak, which is a little different than shaft mining. There likely is more going on here. But this is just north of my location, guys. I'm like, I'm right down here. I'm literally here. I could even measure. Let's go see. How, how close are we? Let's see. There's the lake. Let's measure right on up here. There it is. So, I mean, we are 80 miles south by southeast is my location. Uh, where I live. So it's close enough I could go up and investigate, but I don't really know what I'd be investigating. I don't even know if I'd be allowed to. Probably get ran out of town. Anyway, guess how many earthquakes we've had up here in the last several years? None! None! Zero! Not in years. In the years I've been reporting, none. So what about down in Georgia? How about all the time? Every few weeks when the Craton starts moving, we start moving down in Georgia, down on the edge of the Craton, down to the east-southeast. That's no biggie. There is an ancient volcano there, nothing to be alarmed about. It doesn't mean it's going to erupt, but there is an ancient volcano down there in Georgia, right? But up at Moberly, ah, uh, that's, the, that's, that's the freaky deaky place. That's the weirdo. Now, I do, speaking of weirdos, I do want to show you the earthquakes in Texas and in Colorado. So where do we go first? Let's go down to Texas. Texas. Toya, Texas. Uh-oh. We've got 666 coordinates here. I don't like it when they do that. I really don't. It, like, scares off researchers. But anyway, all right. 31.666 north. 104.242 west. What's there? Anybody know? Well, deep in the heart of Texas, we've got a lot of drilling. Lots of drilling down here. Oil and gas. Now, they'll use these ponds to collect water, collect rainwater, and they'll take the fresh water, mix it with toxic chemicals, and then put it down into the ground to break apart the shale. So you get this fresh water here, you go probably go swimming in that. They suck the water out and put it down into the ground. So I, I used to worry that animals would land in these and it would be real bad for them or something. But no, no, that's like, again, they're, they're collecting the water to go put it down in the ground. Free water from Mother Nature. As they tell you, you can't collect it in rain barrels. They're collecting it by the huge ocean worth and putting it down into the ground. Anyway, right next to it are all these, which are just hundreds of thousands of different drill points. Texas is known for it, but do you really get the picture of how many drill points there are here? and how they're on the edge of the North American Craton, and that matters. 
down in Texas, look how many there are. Look. All these little pads, these aren't houses. None of those are houses. Let's see if I can find a town to show you what a town looks like. Do we even have Yeah, here's what a town's lo <laughs> Here's what a town looks like. Just so you can tell the difference between that and the millions of drill points that are all around the area. And when you drill this much, pardon my language, cover your kids' ears. Are you are you shitting yourselves yet as to how many drill points there really are? This is just Texas, right? This is just on the edge of the Great Down where we're having the earthquakes coming in. Now, I wonder why, right? Well, going back up across, up into all the way up here, let's go up into Colorado. See where it says 2.1? Colorado. That's pretty interesting that they listed as just Colorado. They could tell us what town it is. I guess this is just to keep all their stupid viewers dumb. That's why the USGS does it. Keep all their freaking researchers stupid. So they don't see what's going on. You got to just tell them Colorado. They don't look it up. So see this place called the Great Sand Dunes right here? There's a funny story about that. I'll tell you in a moment. But right down here next to it, we've got a bunch of drill points. All these oil and gas points here. See this? Oil and gas. Drill points. It goes on for miles all the way across southern Colorado down to the Four Corners area down here. And once we're right down here at the border and we go over into New Mexico, it actually gets it gets to what I call excessive overdrive drill points. All right. Basically from right about here at where it says Chromo, Chimney Rock, all of this is nothing but drill points. This is the New Mexico side of the border, and it doesn't stop. It goes across the border over into Colorado, where they have more. But, so, I mean, it just doesn't, you know, it's not just New Mexico. All of this, see? Oh, look, it's the reservation. Wow. Wow. Okay, anyway, uh, all drill, 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 drilled right over to about here. And then we stop with the drilling right through here and pick back up over here. And the earthquake is now, I said I was going to tell you about the great sand dunes. These are the great sand dunes of Colorado. We're told that this was deposited here from wind deposits, you see? Yeah, that's the ticket. Wind deposits. Yeah. Now, right next to it is the famous Blanca Peak which is where the first cattle mutilations were ever reported. Now, I went down here for a, a camping trip when I lived in Colorado. Camped out right here. This place is awesome, man. But be careful you go out here. It's like the Sahara Desert. It goes on for miles. It's insane. And this is filled with magnetite. Sand filled with the black magic sand. Magnetite. You can even take a magnet to the sand and pull out the magnetite. That's how much is in here. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Deposited by wind. That's the biggest BS story I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, Blanca Peak's got all this UFO crap associated with it. I don't believe in any of that crap, but there's a bunch of stuff down there. If you get a chance to get down there, go in and check it out. But now all the magnetite there in the sand, that might play into earthquake activity filing in next to it. I, again, I mean, electromagnetism of that nature with that amount of deposits there... It could play into it. We're right next to the drill points, though. I'm going to say the drill points are most likely the cause, considering they start right here and go down all the way down to the border. And I'm not kidding when I say they start right here. Look how many there are. One more time. All these are drill points, every single one. Every little pad in the mountains here. Drill point for wastewater disposal. And this is old imagery again. What, what When was this from? 2016. 20 freaking 16, guys. Here's older, here's older imagery that actually shows it better. Ha! Ha! Old imagery showing it better. That's a joke and a half right there. Okay. So, recapping now. Earthquake striking in Colorado. Earthquake striking down at drill points down in Texas. Earthquake striking up next to where the old coal mine is in the Moberly, Missouri thing. Earthquake striking over here next to the old volcano I didn't even show you over in Georgia. What's going on over in Utah? Over in Utah, let's go take a look, shall we? Oh, I, I didn't even mention Oklahoma. It's a bunch of zeros and ones. Those are all at drill points in Oklahoma. 
you guys can go look them up if you need to, all right? I, again, it's not even... Nobody disputes that, so... I only show the stuff that people either don't know or dispute. Because screw all those disputers, man. I'm tired of fighting with everybody. You guys just need to... Whatever. Anyway. We'll get into that before the end of the update. So, here's the earthquake epicenter. What is nearby... Well, like all the other locations I just showed you, there's something else right here next to the location in question. So, zooming in, we have the very famous... Well, let's see. Oh, wait. Do I even have it marked? I don't think I've got it marked. Well, where is it? I said it was very famous. Well, okay, make a liar out of me, right? Okay, never mind. I thought I had a place mark here for the government facility. There's like, it's the Colorado Area 51. But I don't have a place mark for it at Grand Junction. It, it, it's somewhere in here. I just, I'll never be able to find it on my own. I had a place mark before. Okay, well, there's the Colorado Area 51, which is like some kind of weird government facility that's out here, right at the border, somewhere out here. Just west of, well, southwest of Grand Junction. Man, that's going to really bother me now. Okay, all right. But that's what we're next to. Uh, there are other volcanoes down to the west, southwest. Let's just go take a quick look, see if there's anything else here at the earthquake epicenter that I'm missing. That's gonna, this is going to bother me out there. Yeah, it's just going to bother me because I couldn't show you. I don't like having to ask people to take my word for things in YouTube videos, for instance, because I know that a lot of people don't believe things. That's fine. That's fine. You can't prove yourself every time. All right. Anyway. Oh, wait. Hey, I just noticed something here. No way. Wow. How ironic, right? Okay. Uh, we've got a shape in there that is just too odd. Triangular shape. Let's go back up to the west-northwest, go up to Yellowstone, go up the Wasatch Fault, up through Yellowstone Park. This is on the edge of the North American Craton. Craton, Craton, Craton. It is. Right on the edge of the Craton. <laughs> I'm such a dork. I know, man. Look, I'm just trying to spice things. I, I'm doing earthquakes. If you guys even knew what was really going on in real life, you'd even be surprised that I was even on here right now talking. I'm going to make a separate video and bring you all up to speed as to what the crazy stuff that's been happening. And you won't believe it. You will not believe what has been happening to me in real life. And it's not good. It's, it's unbelievable, actually. It's, it, it, it's the cops are involved. There's all kinds of shit going on, guys. Pardon my language. Ha! Huh. I'm just trying to do earthquakes, man. Just trying to do earthquakes, man. Let's go down to the Oregon Nevada border. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, it, it, guys, serious. Like, I'm not. Hey, look, it just says Oregon. We'll put the coordinates in. See if there's anything here worth mentioning. Little outbreak at the border of Oregon and Nevada. Whenever I see earthquakes here at the Nevada border with Oregon, I look for activity out in the ocean, out off the coast. Now, there's something that was do being done here. There were mining contracts that were turned over to Russians, Russian companies to come up here and do some kind of uranium extract or mining of some kind. And it was supposed to be somewhere in this area. I don't know where. You might remember the whole controversy because they got involved with U.S. politicians, particularly the... Uh, uh, the woman who ran for president against Donald Trump. Don't want to say her name. Anyway, right next to here, we have the Sheldon Antelope Volcanic Field, but anytime I see earthquakes up here, and I mean anytime I see earthquakes up here, I look out off the ocean, out into the co out off the coast in the ocean, for new seismic to break out within a few days, even if it's man-made or induced somehow there. This is like a warning sign that something's getting ready to happen out off the coast when we start to break here next to a place. The place here is called Bittner Butte, of all things, and Blowout Mountain. So Blowout Mountain is right here. 
and Bittner Butte is right next to it over here. And I had to find this all myself. The lava flows, the place marks, <laughs> everything. And looking at it now, these are ancient volcanoes. Uh, here's an old lava flow across the valley from it. Weathered down over time. I, again, I, this, I don't think this thing will ever erupt again, knock on wood. But it is a weak point as energy is flowing in from the Juan de Fuca. So first we start to break on land and then we see something break out in the ocean. The real question is, is do they have the guts to report the earthquakes out in the ocean now? Going back down into California, we go down to California, Nevada's border. And we have a cluster of earthquakes up here between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake in our giant crater. Going down to the south, we have a cluster of earthquakes at Long Valley Caldera going over across into Monte Cristo Hills, volcanic buttes. Further down to the south, we're next to Yubihibi craters and going out to our nuclear test sites and then back down to Crater Flats down towards the border with California. So let's recap. These earthquakes up here centered around the middle point between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. Let me show you what's there between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. I showed it to you a bunch of times before, but now you should be able to see it just clear as day here on the screen. This giant oval shape here. This giant oval shape. Giant ancient caldera of some kind. It is lined with its own volcanoes. It gets hit with earthquakes all the way around the outside edge. We have two folds or deep basins on either side, and I think this is an ancient caldera. Also, we have Steamboat Springs here on the south side of it. And same distance up to the north, we have the Needles at Pyramid Lake, which are another geothermal feature. So we have geothermal features somewhat equidistantly spaced on both sides of it. We have two folds or basins filled with water on either side of it. It's oval-shaped, lined with its own volcanoes, gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge and into the middle, and fires also break out around the outside edge and going into the middle. So, obviously, ancient caldera. Now, there's something else. I need to turn off all my play smart. Because this here, right here, we have a military base right next to it. Huge, huge Hawthorne Military Depot. U.S. Army. All the bunkers that go down deep underground. And where they store the ammo and the nukes and stuff. Now, I turn it sideways like this. So, here, this... I'm going to draw it out for you with my mouse. This I've showed you before. And this one is indisputable in the shape of a giant star fort. Here, 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 and here. In the middle of it is Edwards Air Force Base. On the right-hand side of it is Area 51 and the nuke test sites. On the left-hand side of it is 29 Palms Military Base and Military Bombing Range and Marine Training Base. In the middle, like I said, is Edwards Air Force Base in the middle of the giant star fort shape. Now next to it is the weathered one, but its pinnacle comes right up into Hawthorne Military Base, which is in the middle pinnacle of the crater next to it. We have Area 51 on the left side, and on the right side, we've got the biggest gold mine in the United States. Now the third one goes up into Bend, Oregon, and comes back down to here, and we have a giant crater on the back side of it. The third one, but you can see it. Up here in the pinnacle tip, we don't have a military base. We've got the Facebook data center. This place, the Facebook data center, in the middle of it. In the middle of it. So, now why am I taking the time to show this to you? The earthquake is striking between the two. The swarm outbreak, the outbreak that I'm showing you. It can't be changed. Look, we, we're, we're getting too many of these outbreaks on the sides and the tips of these giant star fort shapes. And why is Facebook Data Center built? <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. We call that a tangent in geophysics, guys. But there it is. Why are they building military bases and Facebook data centers in the pinnacle tip of all those giant 300-mile-long star forts that couldn't have been built by humans but yet were still built by someone? Super ancient continental sized structures with military bases in the middle of them. Did I just go off the rails or what? 
Now let's go down to the south and go down into Southern California. Speaking of going off the rails, let's go down to Southern California. <laughs> Let's go down to Southern California and take a look and see if the earthquakes are going on down here in L.A. Let's go into Central L.A. and go take a look, see where we are. MacArthur Park. Oh, man. All right. Let's go take a look. MacArthur Park, California. This is called, why don't they just call it California like all the other ones that they're doing? Okay. Here we are. MacArthur Park. Okay. It surely is. Now, I do recall there being something else here nearby. Let's just go ahead and turn on our place marks and go see. Yeah, yeah, there sure is. We've got ourselves our oil pumping operation down here at the Baldwin Hills. But I think there's something else up here, isn't there? Or is it up here? I know the La Brea tar pits are somewhere up here, aren't they? But what's down here? I, I just, for some reason, I remember there being something here nearby. L.A. people should be able to tell me. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay, all right. Thanks for reminding me. Okay, yeah, the old oil pumping operation. That's right. Okay, I knew there was something here. Let's see if there's still remnants down in this one. No, it's graveyard. Let's see if there's still remnants down in here. Yeah, there was an ancient Tartarian pumping operation that was here from the... When I say ancient, I'm talking 1800s, guys, but it was already here. You have to understand who was here first in order to understand how old it is. But, okay, in the 1800s, there's pictures of prospectors that have dug oil wells and are pulling out a boat ton boatload of oil from right in here. Now, since then, they've turned this all into whatever. Now, hold on. What is this place? We've got a temple. What else? What is this building? What an odd structure. Okay. Anyway, so the old oil pumping operations are there. That's not even up for debate. If you guys want to go look it up, it is what it is. The whole thing was drilled all the way across Hollywood. And they still have, I think, next to, I want to say next to Beverly Hills High School, which is an entirely different location, but next to Beverly Hills High School, there's still an old oil well that's still functional from back in the 1800s. So our current pumping operation is here, which you can see here on the screen, but that doesn't cover the scope of the size of the drill points that were here. You can go find old pictures that show it too if you really want to spend some time. That's what's at MacArthur Park. And they capped them off using a few bags of concrete and wooden plugs. Did you know that? That's the way they used to cap off the wells. Anywhere else? Let's go down and look down along the coast. 2.0 down at Laguna Beach. Hey, isn't this where the big uh, pipeline break happened a few months back or last year? First it was oil, then it was sewage. I bet they did one after the other. I bet they did sewage to clean up the oil. Right? Anyway, how would the sewage even get out there? Why would they have sewage out there? Now check it out. We've got offshore wells that are out here. Big, big, look at this. They're like small cities of most. Platform Garfield, huge oil pumping operations out there off the coast that are imaged. Now, I don't know about further down to the south, but I do know there's a few interesting things down in the ocean down here that have been hidden from the public that I don't really want to talk about because I don't want to get my channel shut off. Let's just put it this way. If I tell you about certain things, I'll get my channel shut off. If I tell you about certain secret things that are known out there already, are they really secret if I know about them? Enough people, the people who need to know, know about them. The people who don't need to know, don't. Now, it looks like my copy of Google Earth just froze or died. Or both. It did. My copy of Google Earth just froze or died. It won't load any fresh new images. Okay. Well, on that note, it's a perfect time for me to sign off. A perfect time for me to get on out of here. Now, I said I was going to address a few things right here at the end of my update. I'm not going to go into a tirade about it or anything. But I think if you guys want to have some fun, if you want to get a little kick out of some stuff, come on over to my Twitter page where skeptics have showed up to try and deny everything I'm posting. And it's getting funny. 
because they got butt hurt feelings. They're trying to stop everything I'm doing, guys. And if you knew what was going on in my real life right now, you would just... Well, let's just say you could probably ask people in chat and privately they could probably tell you what's going on, but you wouldn't believe it. I'm going to have to have other people here with me to back me up on what has happened in the past few days because the general public will not believe what's happened. People ask me to try and tell you. I can't tell you in a video without my video getting shut down. It's a serious topic. What's going on? 7.30 p.m. Central Time. I am saving this as its own video update just on earthquakes. I have not done a forecast yet. However, I am going to do another forecast. I am. And while I was joking around on Twitter and on my community page, I'm going to punish China and Russia and all the people who tried to stop me out by not doing forecasts for them. Yeah, that was all a little bit of bloviating. Turns out when I get a little hot under the collar, I get hot under the collar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lash out. Yeah, I'll, I'll show them. I won't do a forecast for you. Yeah, it just doesn't have the ring that it does. sounds a little punkish, you know. Yeah, uh, anyway. So I'll be doing forecasts for the rest of the planet here. Um, now, where did the energy go? I'll get into that in the forecast as well. I think we got a good answer as to what happened with the energy. Where did it go? Why didn't we get our large earthquakes as expected? Well, a few things happened that were the record and haven't happened in 50 years or so, such as Mauna Loa and two other 50,000 foot high blasts in the same week. And possible subterfuge on the reporting of earthquakes, but I can't prove that, so we'll talk about that just as a tacit little add-on at the end of my forecast. I'll have the forecast out in the next couple days, probably tomorrow, so look out for that over on YouTube, and if you're watching now on Twitch, thank you for watching, even though craziness has been happening and I have not really been on here much. I had to set the Twitch chat room into emote only because of the current situation. And how serious things got. Trust me, guys. This is for your own good. I, I sound like a parent, right? Like, you're grounded for your own good. But no, seriously. Um, the chat room is set to emote only for a good reason. And once you hear the reason, you will agree. There will not be one person who disagrees with me. That it should not be set into emote only at this point. Over at YouTube, it's I can be in the chat room while it's premiering. So I can kind of monitor the comments there and stuff. But, you know, again, it's... It's impossible when you're running a 24-7 stream to do that. What a wild time to be alive. Do you guys have an earthquake plan? You know, with the earthquake, being the earthquake guy here, I have to remind everybody to take the time to develop an emergency kit. A lot of people hear it, and they never do it for some reason. I don't know why. Literally, people get caught without anything in a disaster. A change of clothes, a set of shoes, food and water for a couple days, and you need to have it into a bag. Flashlight, batteries, yeah, you should have it. Survival, I don't know, a, a first aid kit, that kind of stuff, yeah, you should probably have it. You should definitely have your medicines and things that you require to take every day. You should have extras of that and have that in your bag, as well as extra keys and, you know, extra ID and so forth. Do it. There's no reason not to. You may never have to use it other than just to find an extra set of keys. But in that one moment where you need it, you'll be glad you had it. <sighs> anyway, all right. So we'll get this saved out over as a video on YouTube. And man, wait till you see what's going on here. I can, put, I can sum it up as this. Even Alex Jones doesn't have anything like this on his list of things that's happened. Nobody does. Nobody. I'm just the earthquake guy. At least I want to be. <laughs> Much love, everybody. Peace out.